Hey hey, Marcus Ass with you here and welcome to episode 8 in our quick progression series. Today we're returning to the Mun. We're going to do a very similar mission to what we did in the last episode. So we'll start off by selecting this plant flag mission. We're also going to rescue Lanina Kerman from the orbit of the Mun today. We're also going to pick up this flyby minimus mission just for down the track. It's not going to be this episode, but it's there for when we want to do the flyby. Of course, grab any other Mun related missions that you want to do in the one run. So we're just going to pop into the Research and Development Center now. And we're just going to unlock the electrics here. This is going to unlock our, our first set of solar panels, as well as some, uh, some lights that we can attach. It's going to help us with landing, so we'll purchase those. Uh, and that's it for the moment. We'll, we'll leave uh, our 396.5 signs here, and we'll just jump in and modify our vessel from Mission 7. Now, we're going to do a couple of things here. We're going to first add our solar panels that we've just unlocked. This is going to allow us to pretty much transfer unlimited amount of science. You can press X to toggle your symmetry, so we're going to put these in a symmetry 4. Just so that we've got some facing the outside of our craft. And just for when we're landed, we're going to add some to the top um, facing vertically as well if we're landed. That's just going to mean that we can accumulate a little bit more uh, solar power if we, uh, if we need to when we're landed. Now, they sort of come in a bit funny on this tank, so we're just going to use the move tool again. We're going to move those just slightly up like that there, just so that they're uncovered. That looks nice. Now we'll, uh, we, we're going to need a crew cabin for this mission because we're going to do a rescue as well. So we're just going to plonk, plonk that in there. And, uh, and and look, that's, uh, that's, that's pretty much it. So we're going to have Jeb flying and we've got two empty seats. Uh, for future missions, but one of these seats is going to be taken up by our rescue. We'll just add our uh, our lights on here as well. This is going to help us again with our landing, and we'll just pop them. We'll just put lock mode on there, and we'll just pop them uh, underneath our solar panels. I'm just going to rename this mission eight, and this is our Mun lander uh, number two. Uh, we're just actually we're just going to revise this a little just because the weight's a little bit funny we're just going to pop the crew cabins underneath we're just going to reorganize this it's just going to make it a bit more stable on re-entry just because there's a bit more weight towards the bottom oh and I forgot we actually want a second science junior unit here as well I've also noticed that the science junior unit overheats less if it's further up in the craft on re-entry. It's almost like it's obtaining a lot of heat from underneath the heat shield, so we've moved those up. Now we need some struts here. Just going to place four of these around the, uh, the craft here. And the reason is because we want to actually make the top of this much more stable when it's uh, moving through the atmosphere. Otherwise it wobbles around quite a lot and causes a lot of shimmy through the, through the whole craft. And we'll launch. And off we launch here. And again, just leaning towards the 90 degree mark just for a few degrees and hitting the prograde marker. Stage one, we're just going to speed through these ascent stages so that we can move this along quicker. Stage two, just done a bit of video editing with this particular episode just so that we're not watching the same repetitive information over and over again. So we're speeding through a lot of this that we've already covered in previous episodes. Just warping over here to our apoapsis marker of course. And we're going to get ourselves into orbit. Again, if anything here seems confusing or rushed, go and watch some of the earlier episodes we've done here. That'll explain in more detail. So again, we can actually point the craft slightly up or slightly down when we're near our apoapsis marker just to move the apoapsis marker backwards or forwards just a little. That way it's nice and centralised to our position. So the next step, of course, getting our inclination correct and perfectly level with that of the MUN's inclination. So just making a slight ascending node adjustment. OK, 
current inclination here is 0 0.3, so we're not out by much, just a very small anti-normal adjustment here. And then we're just going to set up our money counter maneuver. Interestingly, the amount of delta V needed to get to the MUN, in this case it's around 850, that's around one tenth of the real value to get from low Earth orbit to the Moon, and that's about 8,000 meters per second. So once we get to the MUN orbit, we then need to figure out how we do our most efficient encounter for our stranded Kerbinaut. So just focus view again on the MUN. So we're just checking which way Lenina's orbit's going to be going, and we're actually going the wrong way because our rescue vessel is orbiting in the opposite direction. We need to make sure that our orbit actually comes in on the right side of the MUN, so we're going to adjust this. We just need a slight retrograde burn to bring us back in the opposite way. And this just means that we're at least coming around the MUN in the correct direction. If we had have come in the other way, we would not have been able to do this rescue. So we're just going to quickly do our alignment with our rescue vessel, similar to what we did in our rescue episode a few episodes ago. We need to get our ascending nodes lined up perfectly, so we're going to run through to the ascending node. We're going to burn our anti-normal direction. So we're quite a bit out in this particular case. 12 degrees. It's going to take a, a bit of a burn here to, uh, to adjust this. And we've run out of fuel in our core stage already, so we're going to detach that. And off goes the first piece of space junk that we've ever left. We might have to come back at a later time and redirect that. I hate space junk everywhere. So we're very close there. I haven't been able to quite do it, so we're going to make another slight adjustment at the ascending node on the opposite side of the orbit. There we go. Now because we're on such a large orbit compared to our rescue vessel, we can do one adjustment here just to align our pink intersect markers. And down it comes. Want to get that as close as we can. And we'll just skip over to our encounter. And we're going to catch our derelict vessel here. Lenina's derelict is going to uh, to come into range very, very shortly. I'm sure she'll be very happy to see us. I don't know what she's doing out here by herself. Just moving towards the target and then we'll wipe off that, uh, that relative speed with a retrograde burn, a slight retrograde burn. And we'll just switch over to Lenina's craft and we'll do our EVA and get her on board. Going to come on board our vessel. We'll do an episode pretty soon on doing a full docking which is much more difficult. Now, the main goal of this mission is to actually obtain two sets of science. We're going to see if we can grab two. Um, you'll see here, we're going to come in across this this large crater. You see above the crater, there's actually a small canyon, a small vertical canyon coming up. We're going to try to align ourselves with that. We're going to do another, uh, another normal burn here just to bring us up. Just a slight one. We're going to warp in so that we can begin our descent. We're going to descend into this canyon. Now the canyon is one biome of its own. So what we want to do is grab as much science as we can from the biome. We're then going to do a small burn to actually move down into the crater to the south. And then we're going to pick up a, a, a bit more science from the crater in the south and we're going to return all that in one go. Just coming into our landing now in our canyon biome. Obviously you want to adjust your descent so that you're going to be landing directly in the canyon. And if you've got a pretty good thrust to weight ratio, you can eyeball this and do this quite easily. It's much harder if you've got a low thrust to weight ratio. Make sure as you're getting close you switch to surface speed there, just so that you are referencing the speed against the surface, not your orbit. So we can see our lights there, this makes it a little easier to determine our distance. Here's our shadow, coming up to meet us and we'll touch down nice and gently. Coming down 6 metres a second now. Just tap the control and shift keys really quickly just to slightly adjust up and down to control this better. 2 metres a second. In fact this can be more difficult when you've got a high thrust to weight ratio. And 
just touching down. I just dropped the last couple of feet there. The surface there was a little uneven. That's my excuse anyway. It can actually pay to turn your thrust limiter right down so that it's a bit easier when you're landing. Now I'll just switch off the lights. Now we'll just uh, we'll just start doing all of our science experiments here. I'm going to grab our material bay. We'll grab our crew report from the Munns Canyons. Do an EVA. EVA report. Keep that. And we'll just uh, review the, the data and we'll actually send this. We can send all of our data that says we can send 100%, so that's great. Again, our electric charge is in a problem. You can see the electric charge there slowly climbing back up again, so that's excellent. We can do as many of these transfers now as we want. Just open our service bay and we'll do the rest of our science experiments. We'll grab two of each, like always, just to make sure that we grab everything. Two mystery goos. We'll look at our pressure data there, temperature data. Now again, the reason that I grab uh, second sets of, of each of these measurements is because you only get about 95% of the science from each one. You always tend to be left with this sort of little tiny bit of science that you haven't picked up and accumulated, so I just get in the habit of always grabbing two of everything when I can. So we'll close off the service bay now, we'll do our EVA, and we'll just go and plant a flag and grab a surface sample. Again. Press, whoop, whoop. <laughs> whoops, my uh, R key wasn't behaving itself there. Uh, so we'll, we'll do a uh, an EVA report, Munns Canyons again, and we'll plant our flag. I wonder if, uh, if Lanina was looking out the window at that, that would have been pretty funny to see. I reckon she would have missed it actually, the windows weren't facing the right way. Munns Canyons. Switching our RCS back on our jetpack and up we go. We're going to see if we can more gracefully enter our craft this time. Last episode was a bit more of a struggle than it really should have been. It can be a bit tricky to get used to the EVA controls, but once you've got them, no problem. We'll grab there and board. Perfect. Okay, so we're going to point our craft south and we're going to burn and uh, we essentially want to get ourselves down into that crater. It's not far away, so this is only a short trip. If you're able to land in a spot that you can do multiple uh, biomes in one quick hop, it's really quite good. We don't have to, we don't have to go too far south, just enough to, uh, to get into this other biome. That should be enough. That should be enough. Now we just need to wipe off that speed, so we're going to turn retrograde slowly as we're coming over. Whoops, retrograde, retrograde, retrograde. Just tumbling around all over the place. In later missions, we're going to have a few better engines unlocked, so it's going to give us a little bit more flexibility in what we can do in this regard. We can probably hop to a couple of different places. And we're going to start wiping off our speed now. Now we come. This is actually going to be pretty tight. We need to back our as as we're as we're losing velocity. We need to slow down our thrust, otherwise we're going to overshoot this. So just a slight velocity change. Our retrograde mark is going to help there and touchdown. That was actually pretty pretty perfect. Just going to speed up the video here. We're going to grab all that same science that we grabbed in the first stop here. So this is the Munn's far side crater. Pop down. That was a better landing. We'll plant our flag. Far side crater. And we'll grab our EVA report and up we go. Okay, now off we go back to Kerb and we need to uh, get there very efficiently. We've got very, very little fuel left. Very little fuel left, so we're going to head up, just heading towards our 90 degree mark again. Now once we're in orbit, we're just going to do our MUN ejection manoeuvre here to um, move in a clockwise direction. There we go. 
Oh, very little fuel left. Very little fuel. We are going to be very lucky to make this. We probably shouldn't have tried to do the rescue at the same time. Now, we've come around to our apoapsis marker. We actually did a full orbit here just so that we could ensure that our burn here is the most effective it can be. We've only got a tiny, tiny amount of fuel left. Hopefully it's enough. We need to get to within about 40,000 metres. Come on, come on. Oh, yes. Yes, yes, yes. We made it. Oh, look at the fuel. There's hardly anything left. Oh, that was so lucky. That was so lucky. So we're coming in here. We're going to... We'll burn up the rest of this tiny tiny sliver of fuel there's probably only about 20 meters uh, 20 or 30 meters per second left in our tank so we're going to come down we're going to burn that off and we'll detach sideways again 10, 20 30 40 50 60 oh that was only about 60 meters per second of fuel that was incredibly lucky uh, we detach that out sideways and we're going to come in now you notice this time round that uh, our um, our overheating problem with our science uh, science base doesn't seem to be occurring, which is which is great. So just having the crew cabins underneath seems to help a lot with overheating problems. Just for future reference, it's taken a while for me to figure that out. Now we're going to need to have two passes here. Uh, we've wiped off a lot of our velocity. But we're just going to come around again. And for our second pass, this should bring us back into the atmosphere entirely. Yeah, so I'm actually time warping um, as much as possible here, and I'm not having overheating problems with those science bays, so that's, uh, that's actually really, really interesting. So we're going to fall in just into the ocean here, just short of the land by the looks of this on the night side. It's popping the chutes. Jettison heat shield. And down we come. So we've been able to accomplish a lot there. We've actually gotten two sets of bio measurements. Uh, with all of our science gear and we've done a rescue at the same time so that's uh, that's actually a really great number of things to get done it's going to give us a bit of extra cash splash down so we'll just recover So we've uh, gained another 474.5, or 474.7 science, and uh, recovered our vessel obviously with our parts there. And we've actually also grabbed another scientist, which is excellent. So a level one scientist, perfect. We're going to need them later on. And we've completed our contract obviously. So we've got 953 science here to use. And we've actually got over a million in funds now, so that puts us in a great position for the next episode. So I hope you enjoyed that video. If you have any questions for me, please do whack them in the comments below. Thanks very much to all of you that have subscribed. And for those that haven't, please do subscribe to see more. Follow me on Twitter at Marcus House Game, and we'll see you in the next video. Uh, it's going to start to wobble. The Kraken! <laughs> yep, okay, this is not going to work. We better... Uh... <laughs> I get away with it. No, I, we need to do it right. We'll we'll get rid of this. We'll revert our flight back to the vehicle assembly. We need to put some struts on this thing.